morning, boys and girls. My name is Betsy the Beaver. Today I'm going to tell you a story about Nana Bush and the Muskrat. This is a very famous legend. One particular day, Nana Bush was even more hungry than usual. He had been walking since dawn, looking for something to eat. Whatever would he do? Where could he find some food? His eyes darted around, probing the bushes for something, anything, to relieve his hunger pains. Sorry, boys and girls, my children were crying. Suddenly, he stopped. What was that noise? He crept cautiously forward, and there in the dense bush, he saw a bear feasting on berries. At last, boom, he took his bow and arrow from his shoulder, and as he took aim, his rump sent a loud warning to the bear that Nana Bush was near. The bear's big head shot around. He spotted Nana Bush and set off as fast as he could, go in the opposite direction. Hold on, wait, my brother, yelled Nan Bush. What was this? Nan Bush calling him brother? The bear stopped. What do you mean, he asked. I didn't know we were brothers. Oh, yes, indeed. We've been brothers forever, so long, replied Nan Bush. He Certainly is big, thought Nan Bush. I can't just rush over and catch him. Somehow I must trick him. Knowing that most bears had poor eyesight, Nan Bush pointed toward the swamp and asked, Do you see that thing sticking out of the water? The bear squinted, peering in the direction Nan Bush was pointing. Nope. Can't see anything. Aha! Just as he thought, Nana Bush was pleased at the bear's eyes. He could proceed with his plan. You know, a long time ago, I was able to see well. My Nana Bush. But an old man taught me a cure. Now I'm able to see things a great distance. The bear could hardly contain himself. He was very excited about what Madame Bush was saying. This is what I did. I mashed some berries and rubbed them into my eyes. Then I had a good nap, continued Madame Bush. Unaware that Madame Bush was tricking him, the bear had listened attentively and decided he could wait another minute to try the cure. Mm. Mm, I love berries. He began to squash berries in his huge pots, rubbing them together, and then into his eyes. That ought to be enough, he thought, lying down to have a nap and wait. Mm. As soon as Adam Bush assured that the bear was sleeping soundly, he picked up a big rock and brought it down as hard as he could on the bear's head, killing him instantly. <gasps> he quickly skinned the bear and cut the meat into small pieces. In no time at all, he was roasting it over a fire. He saved the bladder into which he poured the grease from the fat, knowing that it would not harden. The delicious aroma of the roasting meat wafted through the forest. A muskrat came swimming up to, the, to investigate. Seeing the small animal spinning through the cold water, he gave Nana Bush an idea. Hmm, perhaps, he thought, if the muskrat would carry the bag of berries as he swims, it would harden. Assess, assess, he called. Come here, come here, please. I have a favor to ask you. 
the muskrat swam to the bank. I wonder if you could help me. Would you swim in the river with this bag of grease? I'm hoping the cold water will harden it, exclaimed Madame Bush. I'll gladly help you, said the muskrat. Rolling the bag in his teeth, he drove into the water, swam to the middle of the river, where the water was deep and cool. He left the bag floating on the surface and returned to the bank when the ambush sat. Yes, this plan should work. Nambush was pleased and decided to reward the muskrat. What? How? He looked, assessed, over carefully and noticed his broad, fat tail and how it was difficult for him to swim or move. Nambush took the muskrat into his hands and set about stripping the flesh from his broad tail. Then he loved his rubbed his fur bits of berries with the berries. Well, Sass was delighted with his long, thin tail and shiny fur coat. Swim across the river. Let's see how fast you can go, said Nan and Bush. The muskrat drove into the water and flushed away, swimming so fast that the bladder of berries floating nearby flowed onto the wall. This accounts for the shiny slick a muskrat leaves behind as he swims even today. And the muskrat remains as Nana Bush rewarded him a long ago with a shiny coat and a shiny long thin tail. Well, that was the end. But what is the moral to this story? Hmm. Think about that and discuss as a class. See you next time.